Hello, this is Mark Wilbur. I'm talking about weeks three and four at the intensive hacker school called Hack Reactor in San Francisco. Uh, several of you may know me from my blogging and my videos about teaching English as a foreign language in Taiwan or about learning languages myself. I've been very interested in all kinds of foreign languages for quite a while. but. These videos are all about programming, so if you're interested in languages, they're probably not for you. Uh, however, if you're interested in, uh, in uh, what it's like going through a very intensive program to become the best software developer possible, listen on. Um, so last time I, I finished by saying we had, uh, we had just, just started working on a chat room client using the parse API. After that, let's see, we finished that, then we we worked with Backbone JS. That was that was probably the hardest thing we've worked on yet at Hack Reactor. Uh, by the way, the name used to be called Catalyst Class, but there were so many big companies out there named Catalyst that, that we renamed to Hack Reactor, or I should say the, the owners renamed it Hack Reactor. I'm just a student. Um, but in any case, it's easier to find online now. Um, just to be absolutely clear, this has nothing to do with like breaking into computers that, that other people own. This is about hacking as in creating, making cool stuff. Um, yes, so, so anyway, uh, after, after the chat room, we started working with Backbone, which was the hardest thing I've, I've done yet there. It's, it's hard kind of in a different way. I mean, some of the earlier things we worked on were were more difficult problems, uh, like some of the al algorithmic problems were uh, took some fairly intense thought. Using Backbone without you know much introduction was was just it was difficult to know how to get a handle on the data we wanted to get at and how to deal with this uh, this framework we weren't familiar with and how to read documentation that that uh, starts off talking about what's new since version whatever the last version was, you know, kind of documentation that assumes you're already familiar with it. But, uh, but with uh, uh, largely, largely due to just the, the pair programming environment and, and the advantages I got from working with all kinds of other intelligent, motivated people, it uh, turned out okay. Then after that, we did some more computer science-y stuff. Um, we did, uh, what did we do? We rewrote JSON stringify, we re rewrote um, the jQuery function that finds uh, finds elements in a page by class. Um, oh, we did uh, we did this this one kind of famous computer science problem called n rooks n queens and I really had a blast with that one because it was it was all math and uh, I I was a math major long long ago. Um, the idea of that one is you've got a chessboard, n rows by n columns, and I did that backwards because row 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 column column column. Anyways, it's an n by n board, and you want to place n rooks on the board such that none of them attack each other. That's actually not very difficult to do, but finding all possible combinations of, of n number of rooks you could place on that board took a bit more work, and I had a really good time coming up with that solution. I, I had a, a recursive solution that uh, basically took the set of all solutions for a board of size n minus 1, and then generated the set of all solutions for board size n, and then I had a base case. If it's a one by one board, you just have one rook on that square, and uh, and everything worked. And it's uh, it's fast and it's neat. And it was one my instructor had never seen before. Um, although, to be honest, the um, I mean the end effect of that algorithm is is pretty much the same as as the one that uh, I guess. Uh, I could have learned if I had just uh, looked on Wikipedia, but that would have ruined the fun. Um, and the n-queens problem is just like the n-rooks problem, except you're trying to fill up a board with n-queens 
without letting them attack each other. That's a lot harder to do. There are a lot fewer of those solutions. Um, I wrote a blog post about it on logicmason.com and I couldn't believe it. Like I got up to the top page of Reddit and Hacker News. That's never happened to me before. Uh, no, uh, top page of Reddit slash programming. Not like the whole Reddit. That would have been insane. Um, yeah, but uh, that was that was neat. And it was also neat that since we've been doing all this work in JavaScript and the, the board model for this chessboard program that I've been working on was done in Backbone, I was, I was able to just throw it in the web page of my blog because it's just JavaScript. I just threw it in line in the blog post, had to fight with WordPress a bit to, uh, um, to not have the CSS and my theme style like ruining everything up, but uh, uh, or messing everything up, but it, it all worked and uh, it was pretty cool. After that one, let's see, we did, uh, all right, we, we wrote a basic web server using Node.js and because our instructor is, uh, uh, has, has stated that one of his goals is to maximize our difficulty and discomfort along the way, we weren't allowed to use Express. So uh, we were using pretty, pretty basic stuff to, uh, to make a web server and we had to write our own, our own router and deal with the, the format of, of uh, HTTP headers and, and a whole bunch of stuff. But, but it was a good learning experience. After that, um, let's see, we did another project with Node uh, for the first time at the school, I, I actually got stuck for several hours. Um, I had problems with the uh, I had problems with the testing framework we were using on Node, which was very similar to what we were using on um, on front end stuff in the console. But there were there were some differences with the asynchronous stuff, and and that was rough. But uh, I think. Uh, once, once again, it was a good learning experience, and we did end up getting getting the whole thing done. Um, and and I've I've gotten a few a few higher level realizations about what what this school is like. Um, one thing I, I think that is 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 in our overall pattern is as soon as we're feeling comfortable with something, whether if that's uh, you know, whether if that's the JavaScript language or the, the prototype chains or, or backbone or underscore or whatever, they throw something new at us. So just as I was feeling pretty good on Wednesday, then we got a new assignment and uh, we're doing another thing in backbone, which was one of the more difficult things we've dealt with. And there's nothing there to start us off. And we have to do the whole thing in CoffeeScript, which is completely new for us. CoffeeScript is a language that's, uh, it compiles to JavaScript, but it's, it's, uh, it's got more higher level functions in it. It's, uh, it's terser. It looks a little bit more like Ruby or Python. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, just like more stuff piled on us, but, uh, but it's actually fun. I, Today was my day off, and I, I actually had to do laundry and that kind of thing, but I, I actually spent a decent amount of time learning about stuff that I felt like I didn't have enough time for during the week. Um, the other thing, besides the, the habit of just, you know, constantly pushing us outside our comfort zone, uh, the other thing I've noticed about the school is there's a, there's a pretty strong focus on... On like the the meta level or the higher level concerns of of making software. So I guess I've learned a ton about various frameworks and APIs, but we're also learning. I would say at least half or maybe a third of the learning I've been doing has been has been about the meta level things. Like what do I do when I'm stuck? Um, you know, how do I debug something? How do I deal with some frustrating thing that doesn't work and attack it in a methodical way that will, you know, keep on, be able to help me drill down and keep getting it, keep, keep 
poking in there until I figure out how to fix it. Um, you know how to use how to use the Chrome Developer Tools. It's got a great debugger in it. Um, actually, a lot of tools uh, tools that programmers use, like the the text editors and, and that kind of thing, like uh, that's been useful. Knowing about the debugger has been useful. Knowing about uh, um, you know general workflows and that kind of thing. So just beyond the projects themselves, I feel like I'm gaining skills that are are helping me take on new things that I don't know anything about. So uh, actually, I'm I'm not really freaking out too much with Coffee Script. I think you know it's probably it it probably seemed horrible yesterday, but I bet tomorrow it's uh, you know just going to be another thing we use. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, one big thing that that uh, happened this week was hiring day for the more advanced class. The first class of Hack Reactor has almost graduated. I'm in the second class. We're about six to eight weeks behind them. Uh, must must be close to eight because I finished four weeks and and there are twelve weeks total. And I think they're in their last week. Um, anyway, it was it was interesting. There were there were fifteen graduating students, and there were twenty companies that came to interview them. Like uh, um, I can't remember all of them, but like McKenzie was there, OK Cupid Labs was there. You know, some pretty cool places. And they did kind of a speed dating event where each developer you know, took a station and they'd have have whatever projects they worked on ready to show people if if it came up. And then people from the companies just would go talk to them for seven minutes and then swap and everyone would go to the next station. And uh, it's kind of kind of exciting because I think in about eight more weeks, um, actually I know in about eight more weeks, so I'll, I'll be doing the same thing. And these guys uh, know a ton of stuff, but but I, you know, I, I can actually like look back in the repo, the, the GitHub repos, and see assignments that I've, I've worked on, and I can see the work of the earlier class on the same assignments, and I realize, you know, I'm actually, I'm actually learning a lot, and uh, I, I don't, I don't feel too concerned about keeping up with it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's exciting, and people are cool. I, I really don't have much. Uh, much to complain about, um, but just being me, I think I'll, I'll, uh, you know, look for a few things, uh, try to record a few things that uh, are bothering me, and I think right now the main one is because I'm so busy, I'm a little concerned that I'm not putting enough time into reviewing. I've I've made a couple of Anki decks. Um, Anki is a great space repetition tool. Um, it's it, like you make electronic flashcards, and and the the program will remember or figure out based on uh, when you've reviewed and how many times you've re reviewed various cards, and if you remembered or not. It'll figure out when you need to review again and space it optimally. Um, I've made Anki decks for some of the HTML and CSS stuff we were learning. And I'm totally solid on that. I didn't get one made for Backbone until just this week, and uh, I've struggled on that a little bit. And I and some of the things I've struggled on were in the cards I made. And, and like, if I had just had 100% retention, I would have had you know a much much easier time yesterday. So um, yeah, I want to get more added to that. I've got some things to add for Node.js. Underscore, I don't really think I need to because I feel totally solid on that. Um, some of the some of the general JavaScript things that uh, that we learned from Marcus, I'd also like to put into Dex. Um, one of the great things about classmates, though, is as some of them are beginning to get to get interested in in space repetition review uh, because of I've, I've been doing it. And hopefully some of them will make decks too, and we can share the burden, and then then I'll review and keep up. So um, let's see. I can guess what's uh, what's coming up. I bet the next week we're gonna learn some databases. 
Like it seems like that that has to happen. We've we've done client side stuff. We've done server side stuff. Actually, the the same chat room we made in the client side, we made the the server for it. So you don't have to use Parse. You just have the chat room client that we made a couple weeks ago, and hook it up to a server we made a few days ago, and and it all works. So I think the only only really big thing is missing is a database if we need more persistence than just what's in memory on the server. After that, I'm get oh, oh yeah, we're going to learn D3 at some point, and we're going to learn Meteor. I don't know when, but I hope it's soon. All right, well, I better get to bed because I've got to get up very early for class tomorrow. Um, not sure if I'm going to put this online or not, but uh, even if it's just to myself, see you next week.